Here's Brody Brazil. Okay, I'm here to ask a question, but in reality, I'm here to share a hope that I have for this NBA season. In wondering, is this the year? Not only that the Sacramento Kings and Golden State Warriors both get in the playoffs in the same season, but maybe, just maybe, they'll face off against each other in an NBA playoff series. Believe it or not, since the Kings came out west in 1985 from Kansas City, this series has never happened. And because of it, I do feel like these two franchises are missing out on an inevitable geographical rivalry. I mean, 90 minutes drive apart, you'd think these two teams would have had a lot of fun and a lot of uh, playful hatred over the years against each other. Storylines and nights and games and series and stretches, but they really they don't have a true shared history because honestly... The only time they've ever met is in the regular season, and even then, it's usually one team doing quite well and the other one struggling mightily. And so I'm bringing this up here and now because look at the way the Kings have played this year. They're looking to escape a 16-year playoff drought, which is currently the longest active stretch in pro sports by any franchise. That's something you want to shed instantly. But look at them right now, third in the conference, uh, 12 games over 500. You go down a couple spots, the Warriors are only three games above 500, but they have survived this season. A couple huge injuries to key players. They're hanging around, and whether it's, you know, the Kings as a two and Warriors at a seven, a three and six, however it works out, like, are you seeing what I'm seeing here? This actually might line up. Now, I realize 10 teams from each conference get in. There's the play-in games, all that, but I just wanted to show you here the top eight and kind of get your hopes up that this might be the year it finally happens. How about the Kings since 1985? Ten playoff appearances over the seasons, but obviously right now this 16-year drought, which sounds terrible. And if you're a Sacramento fan, yeah, it has been. Until this year, you're lighting the beam, you're doing it up big. But hang on just a second. The Warriors had a streak of their own not so long ago. In these 10 playoffs, the Kings have faced different franchises like Phoenix, Portland, Houston, the Lakers, uh, the Seattle Supersonics when they existed, Utah, Dallas, Minnesota, and the San Antonio Spurs. But not the Warriors. As for Golden State, now they've existed here in the Bay Area for a lot longer, but since 85, when Sacramento became an NBA franchise, they've made the playoffs 15 times. I'll tell you this, that number was a lot less until the mid to late 2010s, right? The run that they've really been on in the last eight or nine years has definitely padded that number of 15 playoff appearances because Golden State, too, had a 12-year playoff drought from the early 90s to the early mid-2000s, the We Believe season, right? So I know it's not 16, but the Warriors had a stretch very similar to what the Kings are hopefully putting it into this season. Obviously, in recent times, those four titles have dramatically changed the impression, the popularity, and yeah, even the bandwagon effect for the Golden State Warriors. Since 85, they've had a ton of different playoff series and opponents from Utah to the Lakers to the Suns, Spurs, the Supersonics, the Mavericks, the Clippers, the Pelicans, Memphis, Houston, <laughs> Cleveland, Portland, Toronto, Denver, and Boston. Did I miss anybody? Did I duplicate anybody? Yeah, the Warriors have had... And again, most of this in recent years, but they've had a lot of playoff experience. But can you believe, here's the craziest part of this entire video, of the 10 seasons that the Kings have made the playoffs since their existence in Sacramento, and of the 15 times the Warriors have since the Kings came out west, can you believe the Kings and Warriors have never even both made the playoffs in the same season? I need to say this again. The Kings and Warriors, this just goes to show you how one team has been good when the other one's bad and vice versa. The Kings and Warriors have never both made the playoffs in the same season. That is nuts. That is like, it's almost too hard to believe that it has actually worked out that way, but it, it explains a lot. It's not just the bad luck of never having a playoff series against each other. They've never even both been in the playoffs in the very same season. So maybe that's due to change this year. Okay, here's the map. Here's the geography. You know where the Kings are. You know where the Warriors are. I'm going to draw a line basically right through Vacaville, uh, Vacaville and Fairfield. I almost put them together there. Vacaville and Fairfield, sorry. 
uh, basically right up Highway 80 there, Interstate 80. And that line's going to also, for me, stay west of Stockton. I know there's a lot of people out there who will say, oh, the Central Valley is Warriors territory. Look, it goes like this. Are there a lot of Warriors fans east of that yellow line? Absolutely. And are some of them just bandwagon? I saw somebody say ring chasers. Uh, Maybe. Maybe I'm here to defend Sacramento. Like, they really support their basketball team quite well. And am I also here to say that there's not a lot of Kings fans west of that line? Probably a fair assessment. Look, I I get it. From the A's and Giants perspective, maybe even from the Raiders and 49ers perspective, when they both existed here, there's some unique geography in terms of the fan bases and when teams came and crossing lines, all that stuff. Okay, bottom line, you know, that kind of, uh, 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 what's it called, a a neutral zone, if you will, Uh the, the demilitarized zone, I, I don't want to make light of, of war, but do they have that, a, a, an area between, you know, two countries that are, are having a disagreement? And, and that, that DMZ is basically Vacaville, Vacaville and Fairfield. Why do I keep saying that wrong? Vacaville and Fairfield. I should, I should say them the other way around. Fairfield and Vacaville. There we go. But it kind of is that area that, that is where the line is drawn. Again, this isn't perfect, but if I'm here to say... Where are Kings fans? Where are Warriors fans? That's where I would draw the line. I also realize, you know, there's some uh, television territorial restrictions that have existed for many decades now. Here in the Bay Area, we don't get to watch the Sacramento Kings on our televisions. Now, little flex here. Brazil gets to watch them because I know some people. I know some secrets. I know some ways. But, uh, you know. Uh, on the on the bigger picture, if you're you can't be a Kings fan really and watch all their games here in the Bay Area, you can't really be a Warriors fan in Sacramento because you can't watch all their games on the regional networks like NBC Sports California or NBC Sports Bay Area. Anyway, they're both partners of our network. I'm happy for that. Long story short, it goes back to geography here. That's kind of where I draw the line. Okay, so the all-time record. It's actually. A lot more competitive than you think. 407 head-to-head regular season games between these two clubs. The Kings have won 193. The Warriors have won 214. And the Warriors have been on a roll for the last 10 years plus. So they've been probably compensating on that number. But to know that it's only, what, 21 wins apart across 407 regular season games, it just goes to show you here that while the Warriors have, you know, the recency bias going for them, these two franchises are pretty close when it comes head to head with each other. So about this season, right? Like this is the time for the Kings to do it. They're on this magical run, new head coach, exciting new players. They've got some chemistry. They're scoring a ton of points and they're giving the chain out for the defensive player of the game. Like they're figuring out how to right their wrongs. Most importantly, they're lighting that awesome purple beam. Now the Warriors, again, credit to them coming off an NBA title, coming off a little bit of hangover with that, coming off a lot of key injuries this season. They've found a way to stay afloat. The team has totally reinvented itself, reimagined itself. And I'm also here to say that we might be at one of those stretches where the Kings are going up and the Warriors are slowly sinking down. We may not have a ton of time here to get these two teams both in the playoffs at the same time and hopefully to face each other in a postseason series. And I guess I understand the real question somebody would say is, why do you want this so bad? Um, How would it go? That's another question. Well, I just want it so that these two teams have more of a shared history, right? The, The rivalry that is established in just one playoff series can last you five or 10 years, and maybe they'll see each other again. I do think it would be a mild intensity if these two teams saw each other. Again, there's no backstory other than maybe... Um, you know, uh, Chris Webber and Billy Owens getting traded back, back in the day, and maybe the Kings taking some Warriors head coaches over the years, including Mike Brown. Um, what's the real shared, like, you know, playful hatred towards each other? I, 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 there is none. So I guess it would be pretty mild at the start of the series. Uh, who knows how it would go by the end of it? I do think it would be quite regional in a sense that, you know, these two markets are 90 minutes apart. I don't know that the rest of the country, the rest of the world would be captivated by Sacramento versus the Bay Area. Obviously, you know, there's 
there's a different image here locally of the two areas. And I, I know Sacramento would take the blue or purple collar approach and they would look at the Bay Area and say that's the white collar team. Totally get it. Uh, but this would be a quite regional playoff series. Again, that middle ground of Fairfield and Vacaville. Notice how I said it. I, I didn't want to make a mistake three times. I, Vacafield? Yeah, no. Fairfield and <laughs> Vacaville, places I've been to so many times and driven through so many times in my life up and down 80. Uh, but it would it would be that middle ground. I think there'd be some cool stories of people, you know, who they're a fan of one team and then the house next door a fan of the other. Like that would be where the cool stories would come from. And yeah, it would be a famous bus ride, right? When the team, you know, plays the first two games in one site, they go to the other They'd probably have a lot of video of getting on the bus, probably a police motorcade all the way up and down 80. That would be so cool to get visuals of that. Or I'm sure a helicopter could follow the bus ride the entire way. So yeah, there would be some things to come of this series, the famous bus ride definitely being one of them. So is this the year? Well, for the Kings, honestly, it'd be a huge disappointment if they don't make it. And for the Warriors, in a certain respect, it would probably be a nice feather in their cap if they do make it, all things considered of, of where they've been, where they're at, and what remains in their season. But again, this would be the first time that both teams would ever even make the same playoffs in the same season. But I'm greedy. I want more. I want to see these two teams square off. And if you're asking me, well, wait, are you saying this as a, as a Warriors guy or a Kings guy? Full disclosure, grew up on Run TMC. Right, I remember all those days. I can I can list you all the rosters from Tyrone Hill, Sharunas Marshallonis, Alton Lister, uh, to Tommy T, Tom Tolbert. I remember watching him. So I can name all that stuff. But I've never had strong bad feelings for the Sacramento Kings. Honestly, I've I've always pulled for them. I've always thought it was cool that they're they're our neighbor. They're right around the corner, and I love seeing them do well right now. It's a very organic story. Uh, I don't want to, I don't even want to claim I'm on the bandwagon, but I definitely pull for them too at the very same time. So I'm kind of a neutral party here. I'm just in this for a good time. Let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. And Hey, make sure, let me try this out for the first time. Oh, look at, there it is. Make sure you're subscribing to the channel. I really appreciate that. How do I like this thing here? Look, I'm, I'm actually, I'm in the phone. Okay. Ooh, that was kind of creepy. See you next time.